Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. Here's a sneak peek of the finished project. First, we're going to create a master board and then we are going to make turn the master board into at least one make during this video. The colors that I'm using are from the Color Scheme Challenge in May, light blue permanent, Prussian blue, and Naples yellow. So I pulled those three colors and I went through my gel prints and pulled the gel prints and collage papers that were close to any of those three colors. And I grabbed this music paper, it's vintage music paper, it's it was very similar in color to the Naples yellow. I also grabbed this sheet. It has a little bit of blue dots on it. And I like that because it combined two of the colors that I have. So I'm just ripping these collage papers, gel prints apart and just roughly placing them here and there, spreading them over this paper. Now I'm using a child's floor pad. This is thin paper because I don't want tag board. I don't want something thick. I know that I'm going to, however I'm going to use it as either a collage sheet or as an Insta background. Now this tissue paper I got recently, it was included with a gift and I thought it is exactly the light blue permanent color. Now it is very fragile. It disintegrates very easily and you can see I'm ripping, I end up ripping it quite a lot as soon as I put this liquid matte medium on it. But I'm just layering it up. It's going to add texture. I like how transparent it is when I put it over top of the yellow or on top of the music paper. Yeah. Now part of this was done, the master board was created during a Facebook Live and you can join my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations, and then you can watch some of these lives. I like to do one or two in a month. I also would like to invite you to go over to Instagram and follow me at Creative Katie. I often post things ahead of time, well before the video's up, and gives you a heads up about what's coming. So I wanted to do this master board and this color scheme challenge not using color medium, but using papers that have already have those colors, like the tissue paper, like the gel prints, like the parchment paper. Now, if you don't have gel prints and you don't have a stash like that, you can use scrapbook papers. You can use um, bits and pieces from magazines that are those colors. You can rip magazine pages out and just sort them by colors, yellows and browns and greens and use them in those backgrounds. So once I had the, a few of the colors, I gave it a good dry, and now I'm adding some of the gel prints that have the darker Prussian blue on them. And the reason I didn't do this at the same time is I wasn't sure that I was going to. Right now I'm ripping up that is that dark blue. It has some gold on it. That is a coffee filter that has been colorized. And since 99% of the time I'm working with color mediums that are permanent, I know that when I put the matte medium on, it isn't going to reactivate. So with the gel prints, I'm getting some color, I'm getting pattern, and some of the pattern that's there may guide some of my future decisions, like the dots, that the little blue dots that are on the yellow paper. Later on, I'm going to grab and put some more dots on. But it's a quick, easy way to do a background using something that you already have, and it's always surprising how it all comes together because even the ugliest gel print takes on a new life when you collage it as part of the background. Now this is just the first layer. 
This is Mixpedia. This is Art Journaling. And it's all about the layers. And we're having, actually, there's several layers here already. And we're going to, the next layer when we're going to do some stenciling is actually going to kind of marry all of these together, make them a little more cohesive. This is a gel print that I have on deli paper. And where there's no paint, it's clear and you see whatever else you have underneath it. And I really, I'm liking that look. Now, because this is a master board and I wasn't creating it as a set, you know, space or background, the only difference between a master board and a background is the purpose. The master board you're going to use for a variety of pieces later. It's intended to be used later. A background you're using, it's, you know, specifically with something in mind. Now, what I'm doing here, I have this screen view a stencil from the Crafters Workshop, and I'll put links to it in the description box below. And I am putting its gesso that has thickened. So it's heavier gesso through the stencil. And this gives you more texture than just white paint, but not as much as modeling paste. If you don't have thick gesso, you can add white gesso to some modeling paste and thin it down and get kind of that medium consistency and do that. I'm loving the look of this, adding that white and going over the various pieces. And, and I'm hoping that you can see how that's just kind of marrying all the assorted things. Now, the one thing I do, do say when you're using gesso on a stencil, I find you really do need to clean that sooner than later. If it's acrylic paint, I don't worry so much. I can clean it when I do my periodical cleanings, but gesso tends to build up. So I'm giving this a quick dry, and because it's gesso, not modeling paste, it dries a little bit faster, extra bonus. And I'm trying to turn the page and see, you know, is there an orientation that I like? And sometimes turning it when you're creating a master board helps you see things in a different light. I'm liking how the yellow and the dark blue and the light blue are playing off each other. I've got some white space there. I've added more white with my stenciling. Now here's where I'm adding some dark blue, the Prussian blue dots. This is quadrangle fan. And I'm using just that circle part of it. I love the size of those circles and I'm just adding those to it. And I'm going over top of all the elements that I collage, collage down earlier. And because you're not stopping or starting or just doing it on, you know, the light blue part, it does make everything work together and start acting as a cohesive type piece. Now, as I was making this, I had no idea at all what I was going to do with this page. There was no plan, no idea for focal image or anything while I was creating the master board. I wanted to get some paint on my hands and just create. And I find doing a master board is really freeing because you can just not overthink it because you don't know where it's going. You're just creating, and I find sometimes I get more creative when I do that. I'm grabbing my darkroom door script stamp and just adding a little bit of script. And again, it's going all over the place on every one of those colors, and it just kind of ties everything together.
TCW does have a Shopify link in my description box below, and there is a discount code that you can use. You can also shop through Nini's napkins. She carries a lot of the six inch TCW stencils, and if she doesn't have it in, she's really great about bringing it in if you let her know what you're looking for. And both of those links are in the description box. So I just trimmed that down. I'm loving this background. So I wasn't sure what I was going to use. You can take, you know, scan this and make copies that you can use for something else on there and that's just showing you. It, I do have a laser printer. Now I want to get certain parts of, you know, with the yellow shining through. So I'm thinking about the composition. I have a printable that I'm going to put on there and I want the yellow to show up in certain places. So I'm not necessarily using, cutting this up to maximize my use. So I will have little odds and odds and ends, and they can be used for anything. They can be collage elements on another one. I can make ATCs or iCADs or fridge magnets with them. I'm just measuring it out, my page. I'm going to be gluing this down in my Canson Mixed Media journal, and it is seven by 10, so I'm just measuring and cutting it to size. Now that was a free printable. It was an adult coloring sheet. And I just thought, you know, I'm going to put that on there and I'm just putting it on and seeing where, <clears throat> what composition I want to have. I'm using my X-Acto knife, sharp blade, right on my Tim Holtz glass media mat. I love this background so much. While it's just the beginning, you can add to it, you can change it. I just decided to use it as an Insta background. I'm using gel medium because this page, paper is a little thicker to put on and glue down. And I'm using a key card here, a credit card to get it to lay flat, checking the edges to make sure that everything is adhered. Now I'm just gluing this printable down. I cut it out and I'm using, I'm using the gel medium. I don't have to, but it's what I had out and my brush was already all dirty with that. So, and I thought about leaving this white, which is something I've been doing a lot of. And then I decided, you know, do I want another piece of yellow? I decided that I wanted to paint this and I'm sticking to the color scheme challenge, but I know that if I use the Naples yellow with the Prussian blue, with the light blue permanent, I am going to get some form of green. So I'm just mixing those up on my glass media mat and I'm going to get green for the leaves. I'm still being true to the color scheme challenge. And that's why in my little book, you, when you swatch out the colors and you blend them, if they make a color you like, you can then use that color. There's nothing saying you have to put the raw colors from the Color Scheme Challenge on only. So here I've got green and I'm just giving this a good base coat. I thought to I was going to stamp with a foliage stamp, just get some imprints, but it didn't work very well. So plan B. Now for the flower, I'm adding some white gesso with the Naples yellow. And I add as I go, I add more so that it's just a slightest bit of that Naples yellow. So again, you can change the tone by adding white or black to your colors. And you're still staying within the color scheme. So again, I'm getting a base coat. I do go over it and get a little bit more. I wanted the middle of this flower to be the strongest of the Naples yellow so it goes well with the yellow that's in the background. Now I'm doing some shading and I'm using the Prussian blue. I'm using my angle brush 
and the floating acrylic technique. And I'll put a link to the video where I teach that. So if you have something that you're interested in, it's a good technique to learn. I do come back in with black. And I like how the black and the navy, the navy blends or the Prussian blue blends well. And then the black just adds a little bit more shadow to it. And you can see I did coat that daisy flower a little more with just more straight up or very, very lightened Naples yellow. So it's very much off white. But we're going to do some shading on that too with the Naples yellow. Now, when you're doing the floating acrylic technique, you don't want, you kind of skip over it and do ones. You don't want to touch it when it's wet. You need it to let it dry. So either you need to put the heat tool on or just let it dry in between and give it some space to do it. So I'm using the Naples yellow floating acrylic technique and just adding the where the lines are. And that's one of the great things about using a printable. There are lines, or a stamp for that matter. There are kind of guidelines that show you where the lines or the shading are. And then I'm just playing up, you know, playing with this, seeing, you know, adding more as I like it. It's not a fast process but I find it very zen-like. I just love doing shading and highlighting. And now I'm coming in with some black and that's just going to add a little bit more shading and a little more definition to this daisy-like flower. So if you have adult coloring books, you can cut out focal images from there and use them on your art journal pages. Don't let anybody tell you if you can't draw that you can't art journal. There are ways around that. And every time you're using it, you, you get the idea of the shape of the flower. And gradually I'm getting a little more confident in painting it myself. Now I'm shading on the outside with the black. And this is, I really like how this made this flower really stand out. But again, I go and I add a little bit, then I let it dry and I come back and I add more. And I do the same with the stem and the leaf down below. Using the shading acrylic technique and I'm just edging with black. Now, if you don't want to do the shading acrylic technique, you can use a charcoal pencil, you can use a Stabilo All pencil, but neither of those are permanent. Now I grabbed my Secura Glaze in black. It's dimensional and shiny, and I'm putting that crosshatch marks in the middle, and then I'm outlining the petals and the lines there. And that just adds so much detail and just really made it pop. I love using the Secure Glaze pens. They are so easy to work with. They're bold. They're very opaque black. I love them. And I'll put a link to them in the Amazon store as well. I was so happy with how this page turned out. I cut from my sentiment packs. Don't just live bloom. This sentiment pack is not just available. It's one that I am working on. And I'm giving that a good dry. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed going from Masterboard to Creative Make. 
Close-up pictures are here. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Ask a question. <coughs> Join my Facebook group. Follow me on Instagram. Bye.